Guys, let's talk about Bash. Linux Bash scripting, that is. Linux Bash scripts are simple and easy to use scripts that allow you to create an automated task on any Linux machine. They are simple and easy to use and allow you as a system administrator to perform automated tasks and operations that take the heavy lifting out of manual uh, by hand tasks that you would otherwise have to perform. In this video tutorial, we're going to walk through a real world example of using a Linux bash script to monitor a service. If the service stops or fails for whatever reason, we can have that Linux bash script restart the service, notify an email address, and perform many other tasks and operations along the way. Now, once we have the Linux bash script created, we can utilize a Linux cron job to run the bash script in an automated way on a schedule. Let's see how to do that. So let's take a look at the environment that I'm working with. I have an Ubuntu 2204 server that is installed, bare installation, nothing really running except I have went through and I have installed Nginx. So if I run a service Nginx status, we see that Nginx is installed, the service is started, and as we see under the active column, we see it's active and it is running. Now let's say that this is a mission critical web server with Nginx running a real world web application that we wanna make sure is always available. So what could we do with a shell script, a bash shell script to monitor this service uh, to ensure that it is always running no matter what. So I have VS Code pulled up and I have the Linux bash shell script uh, pasted into the VS Code session. So we're going to just step through this line by line. At the very top of the script we have a couple of path statements that just allow the script to have access to uh, environment variables and program executables as expected. Next down, we are issuing the service nginx status command. We're then grabbing the output of that command and outputting that to a file we're simply calling output.txt. Once we have that file, we can execute some logic and actually grep for the keyword running. So in the output, if the service is in a running state, the grep command should find that keyword running in that output.txt file. If it does, we know that the service is in a running state and is active, so no further action is needed. However, if that is not true, the else part of the script takes over. At that point, we issue a service nginx start command, which is literally the command that we would use to start the nginx service. And we can also, if we choose to, echo the output of what we're doing in this section of the script. We can say something like the Nginx service was stopped, errored, or inactive. The service has been started. And this is also valuable as well. You may wonder if I'm running this as a script, why do I want to echo this out? We can take that echoed text and we can pipe that into a mail command, which we can use to send that information in that email to this specified recipient using that mail command. And then at the very bottom, we are performing some house cleaning here. We are removing that output.txt file as we no longer need that. It served its purpose. We wanna clean up after we run the script. So after we run, the file will be removed. The next time the script runs, the output file will be created and it could very well have different results from that service nginx status command. Now that we have the shell script created, what we can do is copy that file over to our Linux box. We actually need it on the box itself to run the shell script to check the service status and even call it using a cron job, which we will demonstrate in just a moment. So I have a WinSCP session from my local DevOps Windows workstation over to the Ubuntu 2204 server that is actually running Nginx. So what I need to do is simply drag and drop the check service.sh script or shell script to the root directory, which is going to be the directory I'm using for this demonstration. Uh, and this directory will be where we will point to eventually with our cron job. 
Now that we have the shell script in place, I have made the shell script executable by just simply issuing a change mod plus x command on the check service.shell script. The status of the Nginx web service, and as we can see, the status is currently active and running. But what I want to do is simulate a failure of the Nginx service by simply stopping the service. So we're going to issue the command service Nginx stop. Now, in just a second, it will stop, and if we look at the status, Nginx is no longer running. So now let's see if our script actually does what we want it to do. And just as a note, I have removed the mail functionality from the script just to demonstrate what we see from the command output since I don't want to actually send an email notification. So what we can do is simply issue the check service dot shell script. And let's see what happens. So as we execute the check service shell script, we see the output, the Nginx service was stopped, erred, or inactive. The service has been started. And as you recall, this is exactly the wording that we had in our shell script to output to the console or to be echoed to our mail. So let's check the status of our Nginx web server now to see if we have actually started the service. So if we issue the command service Nginx status, and we see that now the service is active and it's running. So our shell script has effectively monitored the, the service. It noted that the service was stopped and it has now started the service. So let's take this one step further. What if we want this to be an automated action that runs periodically, maybe even every minute or every five minutes to monitor that Nginx web service to make sure that it is running? Well, we can do that by adding this uh, call to this shell script to a cron job. So how do we add this shell script to a cron job? Well, it's very easy. If we go back to the Linux terminal, I'm going to issue the command crontab-e. And it's going to ask us which editor we're going to use, and I'm going to simply select nano. So we go into our crontab file, and we just need to add a simple line to the crontab file, which I have in my clipboard. So what this crontab statement actually says is every one minute, I want to execute this file. So it's located in root and the file is check service.sh, which we know is the shell script that we just executed. And what this is effectively going to do is to set up a cron job that will fire this check service shell script every one minute. So if I had a production Nginx server, that is running a uh, critical workload that I want to make sure that that service is always running, I can set up this shell script to a very tight interval like the one minute and monitor that service. And if the service is ever stopped for whatever reason, this shell script will fire, it will start the service, and our web service will be brought back online. Now, after we have placed the statement in our crontab file, we just simply exit out of the file that we're going to be prompted to save the file, which we're going to confirm. And there we go. We have effectively changed and configured the crontab file to call this check service.shell script. Well, hopefully this video tutorial of how to create and use a Linux bash shell script helps to show just how easy and how powerful bash scripts can be. As shown, you can easily monitor services and proactively perform actions if the services change status for whatever reason. However, there is no limit to what you can do with bash scripting. Well, I'm Brandon Lee. I hope you've really enjoyed this video tutorial. If so, please do like the video and subscribe to the channel, and I will see you guys soon.